When Presidious Watches reached out and asked me if I wanted to review this one, I told him three things. The first is that I didn't like the crown, this extra large cap canteen thing. It's a styling choice that's never really appealed to me. However, I also told him I understood why it was there, as this watch, the A5 UDT Abyss Blue, is an homage, or a modern remake of a classic military watch. Which is really what the whole Presidious brand is about, about making modern reinterpretations of classic military watches. And in this case, this one takes after the US Navy's Bureau of Ships Canteen, which was really the first dive watch the US Navy ever put into service. And this type of crown really is one of its key design elements. And the last thing that I told him is that this dial, which is specific to this newer version of the A5, looked fantastic and that alone was reason enough to review it. So that's why we're here. And for this one, we are looking at a slimmer 38 millimeter watch with a 45.75 millimeter lug to lug. One with a double dome sapphire crystal, 200 meters of water resistance, as well as this sorta of screwed down canteen crown thing. More on that in a bit. And I might as well point this out here that from the side profile, you might think this one was a bit thick, a bit of a chunky monkey, as the sidewall is just this smooth stainless steel wall. But it's actually 13 millimeters from case back to the top of the double dome sapphire. And while that's not necessarily thin, I'd say it's about average for a 200 meter diver these days. Yet, I should also mention that this is powered by Soprod P024 which is another of the Swiss-made ETA 2824 clones. Think like Salita SW200. And generally, in this price range at least, I'd like to see these watches with those Swiss movements be just a little bit thinner. Perhaps with this one they couldn't quite do it because they needed the case a little thicker for the crown. Now price, which we'll discuss more on later, is $645 US to $700 US, depending on if you want the bracelet or just a strap. And bear in mind, and again, we'll talk about this a little bit later, this is a US assembled watch as well. And if you caught the promotional tag at the beginning, that's there because this watch was provided by the brand and they're not asking for it back, meaning I do get to keep it. Like I've said in other reviews, I know some of you care about this and some of you don't, but I just like to be transparent about it. Now, in order to understand this one, you also have to kind of understand what it's based on the US Navy Bu Ships or Bureau of Ships Canteen Watch. And the origin of this watch actually dates back to World War II, where the US Navy needed a true dive-worthy watch, specifically for the underwater demolition teams. And at the time, the only commercially available dive-worthy watch was from Panerai. And since they were Italian, the war was potentially coming, and Panerai probably couldn't produce enough that the Navy needed, they started reaching out to a number of US companies. They gave them some specs and the end result was the canteen, which in some ways looks a little bit goofy, but in other ways, a watch like this makes perfect sense for the time, as they basically took a field watch, something they already had, and just beefed up its water resistance, with this goofy canteen cap that goes over the crown being, at least at the time, the simplest, most straightforward way to beef up the water resistance for it which obviously here on the specific watch isn't really needed, at least not with modern manufacturing. And from that perspective, I think it's goofy, unnecessary, adds extra unneeded bulk and complications to what is otherwise a straightforward watch. And this is a type of watch that I see more as a dive-worthy field watch, an idea I actually really like. But like I said before, in this particular instance, while I don't like it, I understand it. And in that way, I can only criticize it so much here, as it is needed to honor that original design. And in the spirit of that original design, the brand keeps this one pretty simple and straightforward, where it has a simple blasted case with a clean bezel. The higher rising domed crystal is a little bit of a nice extra touch, and I think it does work particularly well with this dial. And as I pointed out earlier, the sidewalls are walls. They're sheer, they're straight, and makes this one look a bit chunky. Personally, I'd prefer something that maybe tapered it off a little bit just to give it the illusion of something thinner. But for a straightforward tool watch, it does work. And the particular watch they sent me does come with a beads of rice bracelet, 
but there is also a rubber strap version available. The key spec on this one is a little bit more specialized and decorative, honoring the underwater demolition teams that the original watches were made for. And it also points out that this is a US assembled watch. But back to the front and to the dial, you can also see that the basic layout of this is a basic field watch, which I think is more obvious on the regular black versions. Either way, it's got 12 hour Arabics, and on the edge, it does have a detailed chapter ring, as well as flat, easy to make out syringe hands. It's just that with this particular version, the dial is a little bit different. With this thicker, vibrant blue texture that fades to black as you go out to the outer edge. And it's a dial, I think it's a killer dial. It's probably the thing I like most about the watch. To me, it's kind of like looking out of a sub porthole to the deep, murky depths, especially with the design of the watch. And I think it plays really well with the magnification of the sapphire crystal. It's also a really photogenic dial. I don't have too many bad shots of this one. And I think you should get a good sense of what it's like from these shots, at least most of the time. But I do need to throw a bit of a caveat in here, because while this dial looks great most of the time, it doesn't all the time. Because at certain angles, certain lighting conditions, it just comes across as more awkward. Like the texture and the angles of the dial come across more bulky. Like you're zooming into a picture and you suddenly start to see the individual pixels. I was joking with somebody that, you know, sometimes it looks like you're looking out of a porthole of a real sub, and other times it's like looking out at the porthole of the old sub ride at Disneyland, if you guys remember that one. And it goes from looking really cool and real to what is that? But most of the time, I do think it looks pretty great. And I gotta say that I also really love the idea behind this one. Not so much the canteen style crown thing, but just the idea of a dive-capable field watch. I've always loved field watches. I've loved their designs as they're just really easy and straightforward to read. And it's cool to see one that's a bit more capable. And if Hamilton's listening, take notes here. The bracelet here is also particularly good. It's sort of. It's actually kind of a mixed bag, if I'm being honest. I mean, I do like that it's not a standard, boring, oyster-style bracelet that they did something a little bit different. It's also fairly well built with solid fully articulating links, solid end links, and a pretty beefy milled clasp. With micro adjusts, plenty of micro adjusts, they didn't forget that. There's also a nice taper going from 20 to 16, and all of which leads to a pretty nice comfortable experience on the wrist, and especially when paired with a 38mm case. The crown cover, the canteen thing here does stick out a bit, but it never really bothered me while wearing it. I think the case is just small enough that it wasn't an issue. But at the same time, there are things I don't like about the bracelet, making this one, again, a mixed bag. Such as the edges here are a tad sharp, and it did seem to be a little bit of a hair ripper on my wrist. But I think for me, the thing that I really didn't like about it is that I don't think it quite works with this watch. I do like the idea of a beads of rice bracelet on a field watch. I love it on my Alpinist. But that is a little bit more of a dressy field watch. And here, it's not just because it's a Thule watch, but I think it looks a little bit odd with all the different steel finishes that are here when the bracelet's on it. There's just too many different types of finishes here, as you have blasted steel, brushed steel, polished steel, and all of this from the watch, the bracelet, the chain on the canteen crown thing, it just doesn't look quite as cohesive as I'd want it to. And I think this one actually does look a lot better on the strap than on the bracelet. Plus, I gotta mention here that there is quite a lot of slop in the end links for a $700 watch. At that price, this should be a much tighter fit. The other thing here that's a bit of a mixed bag is the loom. It's okay. It's not quite Seiko Diver good, but it is okay for what I think they're trying to do. Personally, of course, I'd love more loom here, and especially if they wanted to make this a true dive-worthy field watch, but again, it is okay. However, what's not okay here is the crown. It's just not easy to use. And I'm not talking about the canteen thing, that's actually pretty easy just to unscrew and take off, but I'm talking what's under the canteen. 
Because once it's off, the crown itself is this tiny little thing sticking out of the threaded stem for the canteen cap. Now, it is easy enough to wind, but it's just a pain to pull out. There's just this really thin groove that you have to get your fingernails really in there to pull out. So if this is a daily driver and it's always being kept wound, that's one thing. But if you're needing to constantly reset it, this is going to drive you nuts. And the price here is also something that I'm not fully okay with which again was $645 to $700 US, depending. The thing is, there are various aspects here that I think are worthy of a watch in that $700 price range, like the Swiss movement, the US assembly, the Sapphire, among them. But there are other aspects here that seem more fitting on a $400 to $500 watch, and I think those outnumber the others. And this makes me feel that perhaps going with a Swiss movement on this one was a mistake on their part. That perhaps going with a Miyota 9015 would have been a better choice. That by going that route, the watch would have a similar experience with potentially a lower price tag. Making the entire thing seem like a little bit more of a well-balanced package. Because honestly, when I pick this thing up, and part of me hates to say this, but I'm just not seeing or feeling a $700 watch. Bottom line, you know, because of the price, because of the crown, this isn't one I can just wholeheartedly recommend. But the thing is, watches like this, ones that are homages to those rare early military watches, ones that are historically important, are a bit rare. And if you're looking particularly for something like this, this is one to check out, because there aren't that many other options out there. So as long as you know what you're getting with this one, you kind of know what to expect. And I should point out that Mercedes donates 5% of their sales to organizations that help veterans. And that's something I could definitely get behind. So if you do buy it, that is one plus. Anyway, as usual, let me know your thoughts down below on this watch or just historic military watches in general. And as always, you guys know what to do down below. Like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. But I'm Shane, this is Relative Time, and I'll see you next time.